Hey guys, it's Lydia here from Timberwood Customs, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to do a 3D carve on the Onefinity CNC machine. So, let's get started. Alright guys, welcome back. So this is something brand new to me. I've never done this before, and I thought I'd bring you guys along uh, with the journey of figuring this out. So, Easel is what I use for my CNC software. You can use Aspire, and this is also easy to do in Aspire, uh, but Easel just recently added the 3D Carve option to their software, which is really awesome. However, you do have to be a pro member to use it, but I will explain a little bit later on how I use it for free. It's just a really cool software. It's really easy. It makes CNC work really easy for me and easy to understand. And now that I get to try doing 3D models, I think it's just a really cool option to give their customers. So I'm gonna teach you guys how to do that today, and we're gonna be making this state of North Dakota. So let's go right to the computer. So the first thing we're going to want to do is get a 3D model. Now you can create your own um, or download it off the internet. You can use Thingiverse. There are plenty of places online that show you how to actually get your own topographical design off the internet. But I have one here. So we are going to open a new file in Easel. And it looks normal. Um, until you import your STL. So we're going to go over here to the left, do import, and do 3D STL. Choose your file. I'm going to choose the state of North Dakota. And here we go. So I'm going to keep it this size. Um, actually, I'm going to scale it up to 12 inches. And you can see it's out of my material, so you want to make sure to set your material. Um, I'm going to set it to 13, just so we have enough. And you can see it still kind of is, but I'm going to change the position here um, on the X and Y so that we have a little bit more room to play with. You want to make sure to leave um, quite a bit of room for you to still be able to zero off your material. So I'm gonna move it down a little bit more. That should be good, as long as your purple box is still in your green box. So I want this model to be 3 quarters of an inch tall, so I'm gonna change it over here on Z to 0.75. That's just gonna raise it up um, so it's thicker. You can um, change that uh, over here, and then you can also rotate your material, or your, your 3D model over here as well. So now I'm gonna to go to cut style, and make sure you have full depth cut selected. If you select model boundary relief, it'll just cut out the shape. It won't do any topographical detail or anything. Uh, and I change, I keep mine to X axis. It's just easier for me. So now we have uh, the roughing bit and the finishing bit. I keep mine to these two. However, I do not have a ball nose bit. You want to use that for the most detail, but I'm just going to be using an eighth inch bit. So we'll see how well that turns out. Don't forget to set your material thickness to what you are going to use. So I'm going to be using walnut, but I'm just going to set it to three quarters of an inch. And then you're going to go to your cut settings. So I usually run my quarter inch on walnut about at 140, but because this is um, a little different, we're going to do 135. I always do 60 for plunge and my depth per pass half of the bit, so a an eighth of an inch. And then set manual for finishing pass. And I'm going to do 140 because we have a smaller step over. Set that to 30 uh, or 25. And then I'm going to do 60 for plunge rate. Because most of the material will be gone anyways for the 8th inch. So it won't be taking off a lot. So maybe we'll bump that up. Um, so that's basically it. Now we are going to click generate toolpath. Sometimes it takes a long time, depends on how large your model is. So as you can see, it is showing me the roughing pass. Um, everything looks pretty good, and you can see there are plenty of tabs holding uh, my material or my 3D model in here. And you're going to want that because when you see and see all of this, um, you are actually going to be cutting out your design before you do your finishing pass. So you want that model to be held into your stock before... Um, you finish the finishing pass or else it will fall out. So then you can click on the right side here, show finishing, and now it will show me the finishing pass as well. Uh, this will take 45 minutes, so not too bad, and you can see it just moves in the X direction. Like I said, we can change that over here if we wanted. Let's see if it gives us a different um, time. So it was 45 minutes, 
and now it's 59. So I'm going to keep it at X just because uh, it's a little faster, and that's the way I'm, I'm going to test it out today. So once that is finished, if you have Easel Pro, um, your banner up here will already be black with um, gray hash marks. However, I do not have it. However, I did have Easel before July 21st of 2020, so I do get four days of a month um, of Easel for free, and I can start them whenever I want. So if I would start it right now, I'd have 24 hours to use it. It's really nice to have that, especially for a user who's been using this a long time and doesn't need to pay for Easel Pro because I don't use all those features every time I use the CNC. So um, when I'm ready to save this, I'm going to get my Easel Pro and it will save as two different uh, toolpaths, the roughing one and the finishing. Make sure you label them so that you do not mess, mess it up and you don't do the wrong one. Um, so we're going to export these and then we will bring them to the CNC. So I have my material ready. Now I did actually change the file because I wanted to use this uh, unique looking piece of walnut and it has actually 15 16 inch thick. So um, I had to change the settings there as well and it's a little smaller. So I think it's going to be about 10 inches wide. Um, and so I changed settings and I have both the files ready and they are in the CNC. So now I'm just going to be using some double sided tape to attach this to the bed of the CNC. And then we can do our, um, homing of the X and Y and Z and set all of our zeros. So I'm just going to be using this double sided tape. Um, I originally would use the X fasten double sided tape that looks just like this. However, it's like $20 a roll and this is basically the same thing just an off brand and this was 10 bucks a roll. So I'm gonna be using this and I'm going to put as much as I can on here just because we don't want the piece moving around anywhere. So now I have this kind of grid pattern on my spoil board here. You can kind of see it's really a mess, but it does help me line up my material to be square with the machine to the best of my ability. So that's pretty good. And I usually like to give this some pressure to make sure it's not going to move or wiggle. And um, because I want to make sure everything stays in place, I'm going to add a clamp on this side because I know that the material will not be cut over there. It's just going to be cut down here. So I'm going to add that and then we can zero all of our axes. So now I'm going to move the head over to this corner. And lately I've been having a problem with my controller, so I'm going to have to do it manually on the screen. And I'm going to get my block ready. And then probe the X, Y, and Z. So when you're probing, make sure to select your correct bit. This is a quarter inch, and then it will probe X, Y, and Z to the corner of the material. So now it's good, and we can press done. It's going to move it to its position, and now I'm going to have to raise the Z so that I can get my dust boot under there. I'm going to move the Z back down. Just above the material, I'm going to put this dust collection on, turn on the router, and start up the first roughing pass. So as you guys can see, that was the roughing pass. I'm just going to move it out of the way. I did actually change it to, um, to move down a quarter inch out of a time. Um, so you can see this is where it was just doing an eighth. So I changed it to a quarter inch and that's here. Uh, so it just did that, took about four minutes. So now I'm going to run the uh, finishing detail pass. see it actually did not finish my bit broke I have no idea how that happened and it as you can see it had about a minute left to run but overall it looks pretty good 
So I just took it off the bed and you can see there's definitely some 3D effect to that. I know North Dakota isn't the most topographical state, but that's where I'm from. So I wanted to try this out and it honestly looks really, really cool. Definitely needs some sanding. And I think that if I used a ball nose bit, like recommended, it would have a lot more detail um, because I just use a flat end mill. Um, and also one thing I wanted to point out was the bottom of my 3D model was kind of weird. You can see here. So when it was milling, it actually was doing a lot of unnecessary things. However, it was doing exactly what the 3D model was. So make sure your 3D model is cleaned up. And um, so I'll just have to sand all this off um, as well as the side here. But you can see how detailed it got on the edge here. And then even look at this landscape is just, it looks really cool. I've never seen anything done 3D on a CNC before. So um, it's pretty awesome. And you can still see it's connected with the tab in there. So we'll just have to cut that off. Um, I'll have to figure something out with this up here, sand it off, um, but I'm going to sand it down and then uh, we can talk about it a little bit more. So I sanded it up, trimmed everything off, and this is how it looks. Now this is pretty sick. Uh, again, this is on a walnut, just a scrap piece of walnut I had, and it did actually fit exactly on it. Um, you know, it, it had a kind of edge like the state, um, and it fit perfectly. So I sanded it up. It still has these kind of weird edges here. Again, just check your 3D model. It will do exactly what it has on there. So if there's any flaws, it will pick that up. Um, and I was able to clean up the top a little bit. You can still, of course, see where the bit plunged down and broke. So this overall took about an hour. Um, I believe that the roughing pass was about four minutes and then the finishing pass was maybe 50 minutes, something like that, 55. Uh, again, it didn't finish, so I don't know exactly, um, but overall looks pretty good. The bits that I used for this uh, was just a normal one quarter inch bit that I got from Menards. I did order a couple down cut bits from Amazon as well, so it, it possibly could have been that one. Those ones aren't really labeled, um, but it, just a normal down cut bit. And then the eighth inch uh, down cut bit as well. I don't know why it broke again, uh, kind of odd, but Overall, I think it looks good. And the next time I do this, I am going to be doing a big scale one. So make sure you look out for that on um, Instagram and my Facebook page, um, cause I'm gonna be doing, it's probably gonna be about 20 inches, but I'm gonna wait till I have my ball nose bit to do that as well. I did wanna point out one thing, you can kinda see the lines in here. Now that has to do with the step over. So my step over was about 35, I think. So that's pretty big. Um, if I would make it smaller, it you wouldn't see those lines as much. And if I use the ball nose, it probably wouldn't show that either. So just always have to, fiddle around with your settings, especially with something new like this. I've never done a 3D model on the CNC before, so it's a great opportunity to have some new products available um, for my business. So if you guys are interested in any of these, let me know. I'm definitely gonna start making them all different states as long as I can get the 3D files. And I know there's a way to make your own topographical um, design on the internet. However, I haven't figured that out yet, so I just grabbed a 3D model. Uh, but I'm gonna finish it up. I sanded it with uh, 1200 grit sandpaper, all the edges um, and everything. So we're gonna oil it up and um, give you guys some action shots. So here it is all oiled up. As you can see, it looks totally different, but I just love how it turned out. The walnut just looks beautiful. All the different um, shades of walnut, as you can see, it's really dark here. And as it gradually goes this way, it gets lighter. It just looks so cool, even though it does have a little bit of a hole up here, but it turned out really, really nice. And I hope you guys make something awesome uh, while learning from this video. If you do, please let me know in all your Instagram and Twitter and Facebook posts. You can tag me at Timberwood Customs. All my links to everything will be down below, all the social medias and even the Etsy page. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you learned something, please let me know. And let me know if you guys liked a video like this. Uh, I just wanna start creating things for you guys, even if it is me learning as well. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope to see you next time.